Hello, my name is David Kirschman. I am the founder and CEO of Aerobiotics. And we're here to talk today about total OR air quality management for infection prevention and environmental safety. The learning objectives are number one, to review the importance of total operating room air quality. Two, learning about non-turbulent surgical air systems, which is abbreviated NSAS, talk about what they are and how they work, and also the role of these systems to improve intraoperative infection prevention and environmental safety for patients and staff. So operating room air, it's possibly the worst air in the hospital. What we think is the cleanest might actually be the dirtiest. And this is because of many factors. These include airborne microorganisms from aerosol generating procedures such as intubation, smoke particulates from electric pottery, carcinogenic volatile compounds such as formaldehyde, bone and blood aerosols from powered surgical tools, waste anesthetic gases, bioaerosols from skin or oropharyngeal contamination, inflow contamination from door openings, airborne viruses such as human papillomavirus from electric cautery, as well as heater cooler emissions in cardiac surgery. To illustrate how contaminated operating room air can be, we can look at filters and ventilation systems and cultures from operating rooms. And you can clearly see that there is significant operating room contamination after a relatively short period of time. You can see this contamination can affect return vents, ventilation systems, exhaust vents, including the growth of bacteria, which can be pathogenic that occur throughout the operating room. Now, an important factor that we all know about for air quality control in operating rooms is smoke evacuation. But smoke evacuation by itself is not enough. For one thing, smoke evacuation only captures about 50% of smoke, depending on what specific system is used, the source of smoke, and how the system is used and, implement, and implemented. Additionally, downward air flows over the table from directional flow systems push the smoke downwards and outwards into the room periphery, where a lot of people are located. Additionally, routine smoke evacuation does not address infection control or bioaerosols, such as those arising from aerosol generating procedures or from room occupants themselves. Finally, suction tips can become contaminated when the room air is contaminated because suction can tip, tips contain a negative pressure that can attract airborne bacteria in the room. Air contamination of the sterile field. Well, many surgical site infections are actually due to intraoperative contamination caused by airborne particles. These particles can contain pathogenic bacteria such as Staphylococcus aureus. These microorganisms can settle on the hands of the surgeon or other scrub staff, as well as instruments or implants which are left open in the room. There's been a strong correlation with randomized prospective studies that show correlation between airborne contamination and surgical site infection rates. This correlation is specifically important in deep and implant related infections such as subfascial infections or periprosthetic joint infection. Additionally, data has shown that instruments become contaminated due to the settling of airborne bacteria onto instrumentation, which has been left open either near the field or out into the room. It's pretty easy to understand that more bacteria equals more SSI. Prospective randomized multi-center studies have shown that there is a direct correlation between the surgical site infection rate, in this case orthopedics, and the airborne bacteria levels. Airborne bacteria exist as bioaerosols that can be released from the room occupants, from aerosol generating procedures, or from outside the room. And this effect was demonstrated both with and without perioperative antibiotics. So, 
current standards are not enough in all cases. We all are, are familiar with the current pressure and air exchange guidelines. For instance, positive pressure and 20 air exchanges per hour. However, these guidelines are the minimum and are not intended to meet the needs of all procedures. In fact, the ASHRAE position document on infectious aerosol specifically states that even the most robust ventilation system cannot control all air flows and completely prevent dissemination of an infectious aerosol or disease transmission by droplets or aerosols. ASHRAE 170 guidelines specifically state that surgical procedures may require ventilation rates and air distribution methods that exceed the minimum established guidelines. Well, what about laminar flow? Standard vertical unidirectional, AKA laminar flow, has been shown to have limited effectiveness. And in fact, it's not currently recommended by the World Health Organization. What we call laminar airflow is often not truly laminar. The air doesn't flow in a straight line. It hits lights, table, and room occupants. And what this does is that contaminated air disperses to reach the floor and the room periphery rather than being efficiently removed. This results in significant dead zones in the room with little or no air velocity. And this becomes important because these areas are where we see high traffic and the transportation of instruments and implants and people. So what is a non-turbulent surgical air system? Well, these systems are related to directional flow systems, aka laminar. However, the flow is not directly over the patient. It does not flow directly over the patient like traditional laminar systems, but instead targets high contamination areas in the periphery of the room where we have found the highest level of contamination as well as places where bacteria and bioaerosol tend to congregate. These systems are recognized by the FDA as a class two medical device labeled for use in operating rooms to produce a directed, non-turbulent filtered airflow to remove particles and microbes. And the, additionally, these systems are labeled for reduced risk of infection in the patient. It cleans the air that passes through using a combination of traditional HEPA filtration, as well as internal ultraviolet germicidal irradiation, which has been used for a long time in surgical procedures and throughout the hospital to kill pathogenic bacteria. And by, so, by doing so, decontaminate the air screen in the operating room. Are non-turbulent surgical air systems safe to use? Well, the system that we have, the Alluvia system has been used for over eight years and is currently in use in over 30,000 procedures per month without a single adverse event reported, including in industry leaders such as Cleveland Clinic, NYU Langone, and Baylor. Additionally, ASHRAE 170 guidelines allow the use of this type of system when warranted by the staff or procedure under ASHRAE 170 section 8.10, as long as the room is otherwise compliant with the standard requirements. So in other words, these systems are in addition to the standard requirements, they do not take the place of or make up for deficient requirements. The ultraviolet radiation is completely internal, so there is no risk of exposure during use. These systems are used throughout the day and kept on. Unlike other surface ultraviolet systems, which release ultraviolet radiation into the environment. Finally, this does not affect positive room pressure. The system is a normal pressure taking in the same volume of air that comes out and therefore does not affect the positive pressure relationships between the inside and outside of the room. How is such a system deployed in the operating room? First, we work with the perioperative teams to identify rooms with the highest risk. This is called risk stratification. These systems may not be needed in all rooms. However, 
rooms performing joint arthroplasty, spinal fusion, cardiovascular and thoracic, as well as reconstructive implantation, do have higher infection and environmental risks, and therefore use of supplemental system may be warranted. Two, room assessment and unit location. The non-turbulent surgical air system is best in areas with the highest levels of part particle contamination and traffic within the room. And when we place an, a system, we work with the perioperative team to locate the best and most appropriate room placement for that specific room and facility. We'll identify the areas with the lowest airflow velocity, also known as dead zones. We'll place the unit outside of the central directional flow areas, so outside of the laminar or vertical flow zone in the center of the room, and are usually placed in corners where there are no doors or wall air vents. Finally, we'll perform an in-room trial evaluation and reporting. The trial process consists of intraoperative particulate airflow monitoring with the unit in the on and off conditions over consecutive procedures. We'll typically see air particle reductions of 50 to 70% throughout the room. Review of the trial results and the performance of the system are then reviewed with the perioperative leadership team and other stakeholders. For our systems, they include a unique environmental monitoring capability. These systems have built-in sensing and recording of particulate counts of multiple particle sizes, temperature and humidity, usage patterns, such as when the unit was turned on and off. It will store thousands of data points over a year and provide actionable data on the environmental quality of these rooms. The data can be downloaded and then reported on a regular basis, such as monthly or quarterly, to the perioperative team and the perioperative clinical stakeholders. In the future, this system will be expanded to include additional innovations of room CO2, volatile organic compounds, and room pressure readings to confirm the presence of positive pressure. And these innovations will be coming quite soon to our system. There's significant evidence uh, in peer-reviewed data uh, supporting the use of non-turbulent surgical air systems. These are some examples, such as a Cleveland Clinic study showing statistically significant reduction in bioaerosol levels, published in the Journal of Arthroplasty, Bischoff et al. in the American Journal of Infection Control, showing statistically significant reduction in air bacterial levels, Cook et al. in the Journal of Arthroplasty, showing reduction in periprosthetic joint infection, SSI rates, which was statistically significant. And Barnwall et al. in the Journal of Infection Control and Epidemiology, showing successful removal of airborne SARS-CoV-2 virus, which is obviously important in today's day and age. So in reviewing some of this data, we'll turn to published data from the Cleveland Clinic that was done in 2017 showing reduction of total environmental air particles in the OR setting by using ultraviolet in-room air disinfection and recirculation units, which was their term for, for this product. You can clearly see a spiking pattern that occurs during the procedure, that there are discrete areas of contamination which occur, particularly during times of OV usage or gowning or ungowning, or drilling and using power tools, you see this spiking of viable particles and airborne bacteria in the room. And you can see looking at the blue is the control group. And then looking at the uh, surgical air system group uh, at four meters and eight meters, you can see a marked reduction in the amount of viable particles, which are living bacterial particles that are present. If we look at it in tabular form, uh, we can see a 71% reduction in the overall airborne total particle count and a 58% reduction in the overall viable particle count, which are the living organisms. These were both significantly statistically significant.
These systems are currently used in multiple locations throughout the US and around the world. The Alluvia system is currently used in about 170 facilities throughout the US and globally. Half in community hospital, 25% in ASC, 15% in university or VA hospitals, and then 10% are international. So we want to challenge the perioperative team in saying, are your air quality standards as thorough as your surface standards? So much time and energy has been put into surface cleaning and so little time and energy has been put into air quality standards. And we want to be able to change that now with this new technology. We would welcome anyone who is listening to this presentation to take the next step in their clean air journey by requesting a free on-site air quality assessment. And you can contact Aerobiotics by email, through calling us or visiting us at aerobiotics.com. And with that, I'd like to thank everybody for uh, listening to this presentation. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact us and we look forward to working with you soon.